Hello, you're watching Shalom World News. I'm Donna Villa from Chicago, USA. Here are the latest headlines from around the world. The Holy Father, Pope Francis, met with around 200 newly consecrated bishops on Monday, September 19. During the meeting, he urged them to always deepen their relationship with the Lord while being open to dialogue and serving the poor. The pontiff was participating in the second session of a formation course organized by the Dicasteries for Bishops and for Eastern Churches at Regina Apostolorum Athenaeum in Clementine Hall. The private audience of Pope Francis with the bishops was committed to learning how to be bishops, the challenges to face, and the issues to bring forward. The hour-and-a-half meeting was confidential to allow free conversation between the Pope and the bishops, many of whom were from Latin America. The informal meeting included testimonies, suggestions, and encouragement to serve the poor. Thousands of pro-life advocates from across the U.S. thronged the streets of Pennsylvania for the second March for Life yesterday, September 19. This was the largest pro-life campaign after the reversal of Roe v. Wade. The event was hosted by March for Life in Pennsylvania Family Institute, based in Harrisburg. During the march, the participants flayed the pro-choice legislation of State Governor Tom Wolf and offered prayers for him. The event started with a rally at the Harrisburg Capitol Building, followed by the march. Speakers included Archbishop Nelson J. Perez of Philadelphia, Jeannie Mancini, President of the March for Life, and Michelini, and the producer and co-writer of the film Gosnell, The Trial of America's Biggest Serial Killer. Other notable personalities included State Senate Majority Leader Kim Ward and State House Speaker Brian Cutler. The prominent pro-life prayer campaign, 40 Days for Life, is all set to kick off. The campaign will run from Wednesday, September 28th through Sunday, November 6th. This is the first prayer initiative to be held following the reversal of Roe v. Wade in the U.S. Hundreds of pro-life supporters are expected to gather in front of various abortion centers for the silent prayer vigil. It will also include media outreach, talk shows, news reports, and editorials to teach and promote the pro-life message. Various prelates and priests will take part in the prayer vigil, offer Holy Mass, and conduct Eucharistic adoration. Since the beginning of the biannual campaign, as many as 22,013 babies have been saved from abortion, and 120 abortion centers have been shut down. Prayers also led 242 pro-abortion employees to quit their jobs and become pro-life supporters. The organization currently marks its presence in more than 1,000 cities spanning 63 countries. A court in Muslim-majority Pakistan has refused to grant bail to a 57-year-old Christian man who has been falsely accused of blasphemy. According to rights organization Voice for Justice, Anwar Masi was falsely accused of blasphemy by police in 2020 under the infamous Article 295C of the Pakistani Criminal Code. It all started when Masi got into an argument with his wife after he came to know that she and her daughter had secretly converted to Islam. He vehemently opposed their conversion and his daughter's decision to marry a Muslim. Seeking mediation, his wife approached the police, who in turn charged the Christian with blasphemy. Since then, Masi's son Imran and other members of the family have been receiving death threats and invitations to convert to Islam. However, the young man is steadfast in his faith. The Center for Social Justice says that between 1987 and 2021, 1,949 people have been charged with blasphemy. The atrocities being committed by the Myanmar army are mounting day by day. In the latest incident, government troops attacked a school in Sagaing, leaving six children dead and 17 others wounded. There are local media reports that army choppers shot at the school on Monday, September 19, under the pretext that the building was being used as a rebel hideout. Reports say that some children were killed on the spot while others died after soldiers raided the village. The school was functioning within a Buddhist monastery. 
It is reported that soldiers later took away the bodies of victims to a township 11 kilometers away and buried them. The military issued a statement justifying the attack, saying that Kachin Independence Army and the People's Defense Force rebels were using the school as a hideout. Archbishop Edgar Peña Para, the substitute for general affairs of the Secretary of State in the Vatican, is on an official visit to East Timor. The main highlight of the visit is the inauguration of the new apostolic nunciature in the capital, Dili. On Monday, September 19, he held a meeting with President José Ramos Horta, who was the recipient of the 1996 Nobel Prize for peace. After the meeting, the top Vatican official inaugurated the East Timor Human Fraternity Center for World Peace. This center was inspired by the document on human fraternity signed by the Pope and the Grand Imam Al-Ajjar in Abu Dhabi in 2019. Today, the Archbishop inaugurated the new nunciature. He will hold a meeting with the Prime Minister on Thursday and offer Holy Mass at the Cathedral. On Friday, September 23rd, the last day of his visit, Archbishop Peña Para will meet the president of the National Parliament, Aniceto Guterres López. On the feast day of St. Januarius, a third-century martyr and the patron of the Italian city of Naples, the congealed blood of the saint liquefied, the miraculous phenomenon took place during Mass held at the Cathedral of the Assumption on September 19. Archbishop Domenico Battaglia of Naples announced the miracle at 9.26 a.m. local time, and he held aloft the ampule containing the liquefied blood as thousands of believers cheered it with a standing ovation. Today, the sign of Bishop Januarius Bloodshed for the sake of Christ and his brethren tells us that goodness, beauty, and righteousness are always and will be victorious, the Archbishop said. The miracle usually occurs three times a year, such as his feast day on the first Saturday of May and December 16, the anniversary of the 1631 eruption of Mount Vesuvius. As the social-political situation in Haiti takes a turn for the worse, the Catholic religious in the impoverished Caribbean nation have raised the alarm. On Saturday, September 17, the Haitian Conference of Religious, or the CHR, issued a statement expressing dismay over the incidents of vandalism and looting in recent days. They also expressed solidarity with the priests and religious of the Diocese of Calle, Gonayiv and Fort Liberté, whose activities has been affected by the violence. Condemning the random acts of violence, the CHR also urged urgent action to save the suffering masses. The religious demanded the authorities to do their utmost to protect lives and property. There were widespread protests last week demanding the ouster of Prime Minister Ariel Henry, leading to rampant looting and violence. Even Catholic educational institutions and the offices of Caritas Internationalis were not spared in the city of Ganayiv. Tension is brewing in Central Asia as border clashes between Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan have claimed 94 lives and injured more than 100. There are mounting concerns that the fighting could escalate into a full-scale war. Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan share a 1,000-kilometer border, and a third of which is disputed. Both sides blame each other for the violence. Kyrgyzstan's president, Sadir Japarov, urged his nation that there was no need for volunteer forces at the border with Tajikistan. The border disputes have been creating problems in their bilateral relations for 31 years. The borders were drawn by the former Soviet Union irrespective of ethnic, political, economic, and cultural factors. The newly independent Central Asian countries are engaged in disputes over fertile farmland, undefined territory, illegal crossings, animal grazing, and the control of water resources. Prison inmates in Italy are all geared up to prepare 
35,000 hosts to be used for the Holy Mass during the 27th National Eucharistic Congress in Matera, scheduled for September 22nd through the 25th. The initiative, titled Bread of Hope, involves inmates from prisons in Milan and Modena. Pope Francis is set to celebrate the closing Mass of the event. The initiative is supported by the Inspectorate of Prison Chaplains of Italy and foundations and cooperatives that operate within detention facilities. The bread produced within the prison walls and which will become the body of Christ on the altar, intends to be a voice of hope addressed to all ecclesial communities and the civil world, said Father Rafael Grimaldi, Inspector General of Chaplains. He was thankful to all the prison chaplains and volunteers who make prisons places of recovery and not, quote, powder kegs of rage, end quote. Thousands of pro-life supporters took to the streets of the Polish capital of Warsaw on Sunday, September 18, for the 17th National March for Life and Family. According to the organizers, the Center for Life and Family, not less than 10,000 life defenders, assembled on the streets of Warsaw chanting pro-life slogans. The march, held under the theme of And I Vow to You, focused on emphasizing the value of marriage. Urging couples to participate in the event, President of the Center for Life and Family, Powell Ozdoba, said, quote, This year, we want to remind spouses and those called to marriage of the meaning and significance of the marriage vow, end quote. Before the march, couples also renewed their marriage vows. Meanwhile, Polish President Andrzej Duda congratulated and greeted the organizers and those who participated in the event. The president shared his joy over the march, upholding Christian values through a video message. The Archbishop of Nigeria's Lagos Archdiocese has urged Catholic lawyers to empower themselves with the social teachings of the church. Archbishop Alfred Adewali Martin said this will help them address the challenges facing the West African nation. The prelate called upon the legal luminaries to embrace the sanctity of human life, the dignity of the human being, and the promotion of faith in their line of duty. He made this appeal during the homily at the celebration of the Mass marking the new legal year for the Association of Catholic Lawyers in Nigeria. He exhorted them to stick to the needs of the deprived as they go about practicing their legal profession. Martin said, quote, as you bring these values of your practice of law, I believe that the social order would be better and our country, Nigeria, will be able to attain the heights that I believe God has in stock for her. And those are your latest headlines. Do join us tomorrow. In the meantime, you can visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.